Hope you're having a good morning so far. Uh, just welcome to our Facebook folks and uh, the dear folks from Center Baptist who have joined us as well. Uh, here we are um, Tuesday morning, uh, beginning our time together around God's Word um, and in prayer. Um, before we get started, I just want to say thank you. Um, I mean that from all of all my heart. I, I've uh, spent some time this morning early just praying and thanking the Lord for each and every one of you that um, have taken time to join me on this journey um, in prayer um, and to join uh, this time of prayer and this journey of walking with Jesus in prayer. And I'm very humbled by that. Um, there's something about in the concert of prayer. So good morning, Miss Melanie. Thank you for uh, being so faithful. I appreciate you so much. And I uh, hope everybody's doing well this morning. Uh, we had some storms come through during the night here. Good morning, Miss Joyce. God bless you and your faithfulness. Um, I mean that. Brother Jim, good morning from West Virginia. Uh, we had some storms down here. Brother Jim, don't know if y'all had some up there as well. But um, as I thought through the night and early this morning, well, I'm just grateful for people that are willing to pray. And I don't take for granted that you're willing to log on and to be a part of this journey. Um, I, I want to be just a man that prays and seeks the Lord. And I fall so short of that, but I'm grateful for his grace. Um, this morning, um, good morning, Melissa. Good to see you join with us this morning. Good morning, Miss Brenda. God bless you and Brother Jimmy. Good to see you joining with us this morning. Thank you so much, Miss Jean. God bless you uh, for joining in as well. Um, I really, I do appreciate it. I'm humbled beyond belief. Um, and uh, th there's just something about people coming together to pray. Good morning, Mama Team. I see you there. I was thinking about you this morning. Uh, we've got Mother's Day coming up this week for folks that, you know, you may get lost in the calendar. And uh, Mama Teen, as we call her, um, she is dear to our heart and uh, for our family, and uh, we love her, and we're grateful uh, for her in our life, and um, just grateful for each one of you. We're going to be in Luke 21 and in Luke 22. Now, if you've got the prayer guide that you have, and you can still go online to our website and uh, download that. We've got to download to my phone. And you say, well, wait a minute, it's got Luke 22. It does. But even, as I said, early this morning, the storms that came through, um, I was up and just was reading through and suffering through this passage. Um, I went to Luke 21 as well. And uh, I want to share just a brief word on that passage. And it will link, I think, very well to our passage in Luke 22. So uh, join me in a word of prayer this morning, all right? Father, thank you for the privilege to pray. Thank you for the privilege to come into your presence. Uh, God, this morning as we have walked now, uh, here we are going on day 16 of this prayer journey, walking with Jesus, Lord, in prayer. We are grateful for what you taught us, what you're teaching us, and pray you'd continue. And as we just open up your word in the next few moments, God, help us. Thank you for folks that are already logged on. Thank you for the folks that will watch later on, either here or uh, even on YouTube. Um, we're grateful for that and for the people that help us in that journey. And God, speak to us on this matter of prayer. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus is um, in the, the last week of his time before going to the cross. If you have joined with us on this walk we've had in this prayer study, um, and again, you can go online and from our website, centerbaptist.com, you can still download that. It's right there on the homepage 
Um, and we spent the first week, it's 21 days, so we spent the first week looking at the life of Christ and the example of his prayer life. And wow, what, what a challenge to follow through and to be a person of prayer the way the Lord Jesus was here on this earth. And then last week, we spent time as Jesus walked us through the school of prayer. Good morning, Miss Barbara. Good to see you this morning. Um, as he walked us through that school of prayer and it really kind of began to speak to us of our own prayer life, giving us the disciples prayer, what to do before we pray, seeking forgiveness to get our hearts in the right place in our relationship. Um, and then this week leading in, taking us all the way to the cross. Um, good morning, Miss Courtney. Good to see you joining in there. Um, so in Luke 21 and Luke 22, is the last part. Luke 21, it's really that Tuesday leading in to the cross. He's been at the temple teaching all day, and he comes and he begins to share that the temple one day be destroyed, and he begins to give signs of the time. And as I was reading through that this morning, leading into Luke 22, where we're going to head, Jesus makes a statement, and he says this in verse 34 of chapter 21, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you as unawares. For as a snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. He was saying the end's going to come. And he gives signs of that. And I preached on that, Senator, you know that, uh, leading out of, up to this pandemic about the signs of the time and how the Lord is, is pointing us. And I think he's preparing us. Part of this COVID-19 is preparing things to begin to take shape. But don't let that frighten you. Don't let that scare you. The Bible says when we see these things come to pass, know that our redemption draweth near. Please be reminded, this world is not our home. Jesus was saying to them, and through Luke, and the word suffering is a, is a medical term, Luke being a, a medical doctor, it literally speaks of a hangover, of, of being drunk. But now listen to what else he says. So he said, don't be drunk, don't have the hangover. Then he says, the cares of life, hello, the worries and stress can so weigh down your heart that you can lose sight of what's happening. He said, so make sure you're watching and praying. We're going to hear that again in just a few days where Jesus says to Peter, watch and pray. And so I want you to be on the look at, I'm going to, Lord's kind of stirring some things. Um, I'm going to share probably right about this, maybe in a blog or something. Um, and then on Thursday is the national day of prayer. And I'm, I'm thinking in my heart about a time of prayer around lunchtime. And I may share about this a little bit, but it leads us into Luke 22. So now on Wednesday, if you were with us uh, during the Easter week, and I did the study on the, the Easter week, um, on Wednesday, it's believed that Jesus spent the whole day at Bethany, kind of rested, prepared himself um, for making his way to the cross. So on Thursday, they come back into Jerusalem, and they prepare for the Passover. Uh, and then Jesus institutes to them what we now know as the Lord's Supper. But in that night, there were some things begin to take place, and the disciples were, were arguing who was the greatest. They were arguing about um, who would be the future place in the kingdom. But then Jesus makes a prediction, not only in, and this is the only place we find this in the Gospels. We will find in the Gospels where Jesus predicts Peter's denial, that he will uh, deny the Lord three times. But only here does Luke give us this account and it's because I believe part of where Luke got not only inspired by God, obviously, we know that every every individual who pinned down the words of God, the Bible says, was moved by the Holy Spirit, inspired by the Holy Spirit to pin down these words. But the accounts of the gospel, Luke received much of that from Peter. And so listen to what it says about what the Lord said to Peter in verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Now, that would have probably discouraged Peter a little bit because he's going back to his name pre-calling, okay? 
And he's basically saying, I, I want to get your attention, Peter. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now that sounds strange, doesn't it? You say, wait a minute. Satan has desired to have you to sift you as wheat. The, the way wheat is sifted is you've got the good kernel and the outward casing. And the way that they would sift the wheat was often through through um, a breaking up of the kernel uh, through the treading of the wheat. And then they would sift it so that the, the kernel would fall down to the good and, and the shaft would just fly off the, the unnecessary parts. He's saying, I want you know, Satan wants to destroy you, Peter. Satan wants to get you off path and you're going to be faced with some things. How many of you know the Lord Jesus knows what's going to happen to us before we do? That's why I'm a big believer in prayer in the morning and the word of God in the morning, because he knows what's coming before we do. And I just believe if we can spend that time in the morning, he could prepare our hearts for what's ahead of us for that day. He was preparing Peter. And you say, what well, sounds odd that Satan, listen, it speaks to us and lets us know that Jesus is in control. Satan can't do a thing to us unless it first comes through the hands of the Lord Jesus. Go back with me to the book of Job, where God is having that conversation. Satan is roaring about as a roaring lion, and he comes before the presence of the Father. The Bible says he's an accuser of the brethren. That means he is standing accusing us day in and day out. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? And But he was not allowed to touch Job's soul. That belongs to God. Same with Peter. But I want you to hear something. I, I'll never forget what one of my Bible teachers when I was going to Bible college said, and this has really stuck with me. He said, Satan will tempt you to cause you to stumble, but God will test us to cause us to stand. He was preparing Peter for what's going to happen. But listen to what he says to Peter. He said, Peter, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. He said, Peter, I prayed for you. He said, Satan's going to tempt you. Satan's going to sift you. But when you're converted, strengthen the brethren. A couple things he says there. Number one, I prayed for you. Now, think about that. Is it not a blessing when somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I just want you to know I've been praying for you. Or maybe you share a prayer request through the church um, or through other people, and they come and say, hey, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. Man, I don't know about you, but it strengthens me to know that people are praying for me. But let me just kind of see if we can wrap our minds around this. The Lord Jesus Christ daily is praying for us. This was not just something he did for Peter. The Bible says in Hebrews, that he, he, as he, he went to the Father with his sacrifice, and we're able to come into the holiest of holies before God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We can come into the throne room of heaven. I don't know, it gets me every time. And I don't know about you. You know why? Because I, I'm not much here on this earth. I mean, I, could, I couldn't, I, I, I might could get you a, a free meal at a Chinese restaurant when this thing opens back up. Just because I know I'm, I eat there a lot, but I can't get you. My name won't get you anywhere. But because of Jesus, Michael Wilkes from Skitch Mountain, Georgia, can go into the very throne room of heaven because of Jesus. But listen, what else? He's our high priest. The Bible said he's making intercession. The Bible says in John, First John, that he is our advocate before the father he's our defense attorney that means when the devil comes to accuse us we have the finest attorney in all of the universe he is our savior and our lord and if we know him as our savior and lord he is our advocate he is standing between us and god and he's praying for us he's praying for us Whew, hallelujah I'm just grateful, so grateful that he is praying for us. But listen to what he says. He says, Peter, I want you to know that, that you're, this is going to happen. You're going to deny me. But it's not, it's not final. I want you to hear me. Failure is not final. He said, Peter, when you're, we, I mean, listen to this. He says, when, <laughs> he 
He didn't say if. He said, Peter, I want you to know I see in you a leader of the church. Peter, I see you. I see more in you than you can see for yourself. And you're going to have some moments where you're going to blow it. But Peter, if you'll turn back to me when you're converted, the word converted there does not necessarily speak for Peter of salvation as much as it does a revival, a returning. And Peter comes back. He does, doesn't he? And God uses him to lead the church there in Jerusalem and stand on the day of Pentecost. You know why the devil's coming after you? Because God's wanting to use you. You know why the devil's coming after you? Because God, listen, if you're butting heads with the devil, it's because God's got a plan for your life. God wants to use you. He's trying to stop you. But you have an advocate with the Father, and he's prayed for you. And even if you fail, the Bible says, that a righteous man will get up seven times. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Don't you listen to the devil that even if you've blown it. Now, let's just get honest. In this COVID-19, in this season of isolation and shelter at home, man, there's been frustration. There's emotions you've had. There's had to be a time at some point you may have, have, have blown it. You may have lost your cool. You may have said something you shouldn't have said, done something you shouldn't have done. I want you to know failure is not final. I shared with a man this weekend, his mercy is new every morning. And he looked at Peter and said, Peter, when you're converted, strengthen the brethren, Peter. Peter, I'm not, I'm not done with you. you you're going to face this, Peter. So how does this link back to our, to our passage earlier? Watch and pray. You're speaking that to the disciples. He will say to Peter again, and we're going to study it in a couple days. Watch and pray, Peter. Watch and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So what do we do when we are faced with these moments and we're battling Satan? Pray. Stay on our knees before the Father. Know that he is able to help us. And if you're walking through that, and boy, you feel like you have, listen, he may... Satan may win a battle or two, <laughs> but he ain't going to win the war. Are you hearing me? He is a defeated foe. He is a lion with his teeth already knocked out. In the name of Jesus, Jesus knocked his teeth out at, at Calvary and through the resurrection. He's a defeated foe. He has a loud roar. And yes, he's coming to seek who he met. Listen, the Bible says that these come to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life. Jesus said, Peter, Satan wants you, but you don't belong to him. You belong to me. And I want you to know, Peter, I've prayed for you. I just want to encourage you this morning. When you think about what Peter went through and what Peter faced, because not only will God use you, because God wants to use you to touch others. God wants to use you to encourage others, to come alongside them and say, hey, the Lord's with us. I, I don't know what you have walked through. I don't know who may be listening to this that, well, you have failed and, and, and the devil wants to keep bringing up your past and bringing up your failures. If you have laid it before the Lord. Now, if you haven't, that's all. Listen, the Bible says we've got to confess our sins. And Peter would, he would go and weep bitterly. And, and then he would face that confrontation with the Lord Jesus there in, in, in John 21. And, and then Peter would go on on the day of Pentecost full of the Holy Spirit of God and would preach and thousands would be saved. He would literally one day lay his life down for the Father as a martyr. So failure didn't have to be final. So you hear me this morning. If you've confessed your sins, you've laid it before the Lord, don't you let the enemy tell you that you are a failure and there's nothing more you can do. In the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus has prayed for you and he says to you like he did Peter, when you have returned, strengthen the brethren. Strengthen the brethren. Well, I will encourage you. Stay before the Lord. Hey, I hope that in this journey of 21 days, you have spent more time with the Lord than ever before. So, Pastor, I feel like I failed in that. Hey, listen, all of us do, but just keep praying. Today, I put a link on, the, on, on my Facebook page. There's an opportunity to pray with 
with over a listen as of this morning early there was 199,000 people signed up to say they would be praying at some point today for spiritual awakening would you take time to look at that link and if you're able at some point today join me and so many others that are praying for spiritual awakening I'm not going to go into detail now look at the link it, it shares about um, a man by the name of brother Lunsford uh, brother Fred Lunsford who 95 years old has a heart for spiritual awakening. And I, I want to encourage you to join me in that and then be praying that I may uh, at some point on Thursday, the national day of prayer, share some things about prayer and have a time of prayer separate, even from this study. But I just want to encourage you. I, I'm telling you, there's not a one of us, including this man right here, who has not fallen and, and, and messed up and, 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 and and fallen short of the glory of God. But I'm grateful <laughs> when the Lord does a work in our heart and we come and we confess our sins. He's not only faithful and just to forgive our sins, but he picks us up. He sets us on a solid rock. And he says to us, I'm not done with you. <laughs> you stay in the fight. You keep fighting a good fight. Remember <laughs> I don't know why I'm so emotional this morning. I just believe somebody needs to hear this word. Somebody's close to giving up. Somebody's fighting the battle. Jesus is praying for you. I'm praying for you. Don't you give up. Stay in the battle. It's worth it. It's worth it. Let's battle on our knees. And he will fight for us. <laughs> he is our the Lord, our banner. And he will fight for us. Hey, I could keep going on and on. People at Center Baptist know that. Uh, but I, I want to be a good steward of your time. Thank you again. I want to pray, and let's go before the Lord. Father, I just sense in my heart this morning, I don't know, that somebody that's either watching now or will watch later is at a point where Peter was at, or they have found themselves succumbing to the enemy's temptation. Father, would you remind them this morning, the battle is yours. And the Bible says if we'll confess our sins, we have a great high priest who, who is able to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have a great high priest who is praying for us that failure is not final. There are others that might be watching God that they've got things right with you, but the devil keeps bringing up their past. Lord, remind them today that Jesus Christ is praying for them and is saying to them, when you have returned, strengthen the brethren. I've got a purpose for you. Don't let them be listening to the whispers of the enemy. God, he's a defeated foe in the name of Jesus. And I pray God help us to stay in the battle. God, help us to stay. I just want to say thank you for praying for us. Thank you for making a way that we can come to the Father in prayer. Thank you for this thing called prayer that connects us with you. And God, we need you today. Encourage your people, God, to stay the course, and to stay on our knees before you. Thank you for a sweet time this morning. God, I just sent you presents. And I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being our advocate. Thank you for being our intercessor. Thank you that failure is not final. Thankful that you're not through with us. Thankful that you've got a purpose for us. And God, may we stay the course by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my goodness, I am nothing but a crybaby. My family tells me that all the time. But I, I just can't explain it. The Lord met with us this morning. I'm very grateful. I want to say thank you, Brother Jim. Thank you so much for being a part. Brother Tom, thank you for, for joining with us this morning. Miss Francis, I just want to say thank you for being a part. Uh, Brother Eddie Tanner, thank you this morning, brother, for joining in. God bless you, my dear friend. And, uh, Miss Vicky, God bless you for joining in. Miss Courtney, God bless you. Barbara, uh, Mama Teen, again, thank you. Miss Jean, 
Brenda, Melissa, thank you. Miss Joyce, you're so faithful. Miss Melanie, God bless you. Hey, if you join in with us today, uh, put a comment there, a prayer request, to just to, hey there, anything. Just so I, like, I always like to come back maybe later in the day and just to communicate and thank you. Um, but just if you got a prayer request, I'd love to pray with you. Hey, God bless you today. Thanks for joining in. You are a blessing to this pastor. And I pray the Lord encourage your heart as we continue on this journey in prayer. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, as we continue on this journey. And tomorrow, I believe, is going to be a special day as we look at the prayer of the Lord Jesus in the garden. And I pray God will help us. God bless you today. Have a good day in the Lord.